So right now I'm setting up the DC to DC charger um, inside the rig. I have my wires all hooked up in the truck and I'm now inside the rig and I'm going to follow the steps for that. And it's online, so if you go to Victron website, so there's two different modes you can set it up in. Charger mode, which is what I'm going to do. So step one is to remove the, it's called the remote sensor. So this is the on off switch, basically remote, it powers itself. You can do a remote setup with it, um, but I'm just gonna keep this plugged. Step two is input, connect the input supply cables so now I'm going to plug in my truck, turn on the wire, and crank the truck up so I have power coming back here. So let's go do that. In my battery box is my DC to DC charger. And I'm going to pull that out. And I'm going to connect it right here to the truck. So now that's connected. I come into the truck, we crank it up, and we turn on auxiliary switch number two. So these two wires are the wires going back to the dis distribution box. These two wires are the ones going into the rig right here. So I'm going to pull these out right now. So hopefully when I hook these back in, this thing shows up on the system. So input side, this is very difficult to see. What I'm doing now is I'm turning the screws to make sure that the Opening is as far open as possible. Now I have the ground in. I'm going to tighten it down. Put the cut in. Okay, so now I have a signal. I saw the Bluetooth flashing there. So now I'm going to set this thing up for DC to DC charging. Voltage. I'm going to put in my new pin code here. Settings. I want it to be a charger, battery settings, 14, good, bulk limit, good, two hours good, smart lithium, good. So now I have the settings and I'm supposed to connect the battery. So that's what I'm connecting here. Okay. So now I have all that set up. Now I'm going to reinstall my remote device. So that's connected. So now it's bolt charging. 13 volts coming in, 15 volts going in. So that's doing exactly what I've hoped it to do. So here on the app, you can see my battery's at 96%, but I got 200 watts coming in. 50, you know, 50 ish for that from solar, but I see my voltage coming in. So coming in here and then going back out to the thing, and I have 80 watts AC load coming on right now. So that's, that's basically my whatever things I have turned on in the rig. I have my uh, hotspot plugged in, I have a couple of lights plugged in, a few other things plugged in right now, so that's where that's pulling from. But so far, everything's working. And the screen on the app still shows bulk charging. Now, I'm going to disconnect the system and then attempt to reconnect it. So I've got the screen still on, bulk charging. I'm going to disconnect the plug and see what happens on the screen. Now it says charger is off, input voltage lockout, engine shutdown detected. So now I'm gonna plug it back in. So I plugged it back in and now I'm back on bulk charging again. So all things seem to be operating as I expected. Great. If any of you have watched my wire cleanup day already, you know that I moved this panel up here and put these both on the wall. Uh, but it's still kind of a jumbled mess of wires in here. Really, it's just the added, these wires is what I added, but I cleaned up the rest of that. So I left some slack in these because I really didn't know how much I was gonna use. At some point, I may come back in here and tidy those up some, but it's really not that big a deal. I'm not opposed to what's going on here now. It still looks better than it did. You can see my Servo GX there. You can see the communications cable. Uh, I wrapped it up on the wall. But all in all, I'm very happy with this setup and it works really well. So I want to put this, all this back together. So all in all, the DC to DC charger is something I would recommend anyone get, um, particularly if you boondock a lot. 
really where I plan to use it is not necessarily going down the highway, but if we boondock for a number of days and it's been cloudy or whatever else and I run low on battery, I can use it as a substitute for a generator. So it's something cool, cool to have and a very handy feature to have if you like to boondock and stay off grid as much as we do. All right, everyone, real quick on the DC to DC charger. I made a few changes. Uh, I had a friend who had a couple extra uh, AGM batteries, so I have replaced both of my 12 volt lead acid batteries with a AGM battery on both sides. So here, there's a battery here and there's a battery over there. What I had a hot wire coming off of the previously on what you saw on the video last week or Sunday. I had a wire coming off the hot going to a 30 amp resettable fuse. It was a self resetting fuse. Then it went into a solenoid right here and from there it went down and to the back of the truck. I have since removed that solenoid because it kept getting very hot and not working as I wanted it to. So I still have all six upfitter switches but number five and number six are both 40 amp power wires. And they're meant for being like a, a snow plow or things like that on the front of this truck. So this truck has two alternators, two big batteries, and this has a lot of juice. So I hooked in the 40 amp wire directly to that same resettable 30 amp fuse that I had here, or self-resetting circuit breaker, and I moved it over here. And from there, it comes out and it hooks directly to that same cable that goes all the way to the back bumper. And I'll show you those things. I was initially hesitant, hesitant to do this because I didn't want that. I didn't know like the validity of that 40 amp wire, but it, I, since then I found this better. And this is a much simpler system. So if you have a Ford Super Duty with upfitter switches, you can hook it in directly to a 40 amp wire here. And the others were 25, I think 25 amp wires. Super easy to hook up. And then I have my fuse double sided taped here. Uh, to the brake. So this is the master brake cylinder right here behind here and your brake fluid. But I have it double sided taped right there so it doesn't get hot. It's not on the firewall. It's not next to any exhaust and that wire runs all the way back. On the rear, a couple of you asked questions. The negative side of the, the plug back there and my hitch, it's a very short wire. It's probably two and a half feet, maybe two feet. And it runs right inside the bumper and I drilled it right inside of the frame with a self-tapping screw. And I just grounded it right there so that's where the ground is on the truck i didn't want to run ground wire all the way back there's no need for all that so uh, i'll show you those things so you can see the the 40 amp wire so this is number five wire it's the brown wire with blue uh, stripe it goes into that resetting self-resetting 30 amp fuse on the other side of that it goes out and goes down and follows the same path got my new agm batteries here on both sides. The negative wire is right here. It's, I self-tapped it into the frame rail right there. On the block itself, I had a thick piece of plastic here, probably a quarter inch thick, and that's what I used. I cut it out the same size as this red cable, put it right behind it, both wires coming out, and this system works really great. Thanks for joining everyone. If you have any questions about this or anything else we've done on this rig, please feel free to reach out to us via the Contact Us link on our website. Have a great day everyone, and happy adventures. Thank you.